When you're configuring a SPAC installation, you just point it at the binary cache and away you go. 84 packages in four minutes. Other things will install much more quickly. Uh, for instance, um, open foam installs in 16 seconds. Um, that's Say that again. Open foam installs in 16 seconds because <laughs> that's another afternoon killer. Um, <laughs> Gromax installs in one second. <laughs> the tangible benefit is about a 20x speed up for a lot of common SPAC packages. And this is pretty cool because I mean if you're zero to wharf in less than 20 minutes you can just make this part of an ephemeral cluster environment where the mm -hmm. cluster gets born and I mean Warf's a good example of that, right? People want to spin up a cluster, run some Warf workloads mm -hmm. to maybe consume some data that came from NOAA to Absolutely. give a weather forecast and then shut down the infrastructure and just throw it away when you're done. Yeah. Um, you uh, also... might have heard me talk about this before, but if you're not familiar with parallel cluster, um, this is basically how it works. On the left is your conceptual model for a cluster. Um, either this is something you've dreamed up or there's a physical design that you want to emulate. You define the, the various components, the operating system, the head node, the scheduler set, settings, network, um, even the, your shared storage, NFS, Lustre, um, uh, uh, ZFS, etc. You define these in this structured document. This document works with the parallel cluster application to deploy and manage your clusters on AWS using this file. But the key thing is that this file is basically your source of truth. It's the manageable asset. So yeah. um, if it shows up here in the file, the expectation is that it shows up in the cluster. That's a pretty cool way to do HPC. Um, it also turns out that we need to figure out how to get your software deployed um, in the same declarative format. It turns out Parallel Cluster has a feature that supports this. It's called Custom Actions. Basically, this is a feature that lets you run a script or scripts on the head nodes and or the compute nodes when they are booted up, when they get configured, mm -hmm. um, that's like after the, the initialization and just before they're ready to join the cluster, or any time that, that those nodes are updated. Uh, so we leverage that mechanism to make it possible to have SPAC installed and ready and potentially even um, doing some software installations on your cluster in this totally declarative manner. And this means that if you use this config um, on your cluster, almost all of your applications will benefit from it. But then there are also application-specific tunings for common HPC workloads, OpenFoam, Wharf, Impasse, Gromax, Quantum Espresso, they're mm -hmm. listed in this table. And in fact, this table shows the speed up between um, kind of uh, a naive SPAC build and the kind of performance engineered version that we're talking about in these SPAC configs. The other thing is a install script that is in the same GitHub repository um, that you can add to your head node configuration in Parallel Cluster. So this is what it looks like um, to add this in Parallel Cluster UI, or you could add it to that configuration file um, that I showed a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, slides back. What this script does is it loads in from GitHub, um, it runs asynchronously, so that if there's anything time consuming in the SPAC installation, it doesn't block the cluster from coming up. Um, and basically it just configures SPAC, it configures Slurm um, to, uh, to know about SPAC, it sets your path, etc. It puts SPAC on the first shared directory that it finds. If it can't mm -hmm. find a shared directory, then it simply puts it at slash home. You know, we essentially want to populate the build cache with um, with assets that you would find inside of a parallel cluster installation. Yeah. So Steven set out to fix this using a kind of a lighthouse example code. Um, rather than trying to solve it for everybody, we just decided to solve it for something hard. So yeah, so what is Palace? Um, it's for designing quantum computing systems. Um, it's a 3D finite element solver for computational electromagnetics. It's also got a deep, deep dependency stack. It's an ideal use case for SPAC. We want to make impossible things possible and, yep. you know, occasionally even easy. And I think that we're well on track yeah, for that. I think that's true. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're starting with a naive Graviton C7G head node. We run as root to make the SPAC installation available everywhere. And the second part here was installing Palace. And you can see it's already done because I've talked for four. SPAC installs a new GCC. The compiler, all its dependencies are optimized for 64-bit um, for ARM, kind of generically. 
we install everything here. So as you're watching this go by, you'll see lots of green text. Mm -hmm. These are things that are coming in from the build cache. And you can see the cache hit rate is extremely high now. It didn't used to be. It used to be compile, 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 compile. And that's a lot of fun. And look at all this green going by. That is actually, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that is super cool. Um, so all in all, this is easily an hour um, if you're having to, uh, if you don't have very good build cache coverage. Here, we're really essentially doing it in two minutes. And actually, this is possibly the time to point out that if you didn't have SPAC at all, this would be days. It would absolutely days be days. worth of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And by the way, this isn't just building it. There's also all of the architecture-specific optimizations are also baked in here. Right. So how long did that take all together? All together, 84 packages in four minutes. Um, and with two of with the first two of those being just the bootstrapping um, SPAC and the uh, the GCC 12 compiler, so other things will install much more quickly. Uh, for instance, um, think OpenFoam installs in 16 seconds. Um, that's Say that again. OpenFoam installs in 16 seconds because Say that's that another, again because <laughs> that's another <laughs> afternoon killer. Um, <laughs> Gromax installs in one second. Gromax installs in one second. One second. Wow. Because it's just pulling it from the binary cache. Yeah, and that that's binary true. cache is CloudFront. So, yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, uh, I've jumped ahead on a little bit of this, but uh, the installation without that build cache um, is easily an hour. And that's on a fully loaded Graviton instance. If your head node is a little bit more modest, mm -hmm. um, your build times will be a little bit more immodest. In terms of optimizations, so this has RMPL baked in, and this is implemented right in SPAC CI CD pipelines. And that means that, you know, all of the pull requests, merge requests, um, you know, new packages, et cetera, that get added to SPAC um, also build now in this new context. We've got this saying that the most expensive part of an HPC cluster is the person waiting for the result. But boy, can you move the needle when you make humans predict productive by just getting blockers out of the way. Mm -hmm. SPAC does that in major, major strides. Uh, and this, by giving people access to the same optimizations and the same tools that our own HPC performance lab in HPC engineering uses, this is another another blow to knocking down those barriers to, to people being productive. So absolutely. if you learned something from this talk, then please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel so you can find out when more videos like this are available. And if there's an area you'd like to see us go deeper into, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. See you next time. Oh,